Hey y'all, this is AL Figma Dom, and this is the second episode of Power Book 2 Ghost. I know I'm late. I have been through a whole lot. <laughs> like when I tell y'all, I cannot. I am so tired of my spirit. I can't believe I'm finally back online. Y'all, I was in excruciating pain all week to the point where I couldn't do nothing. Y'all, I wanted to put up information on the versus battle that happened. I wanted to do a thoughts post about some things that were going on. And now I'm like really, really late on all that stuff. I might still try to do the thoughts post. I don't know. But y'all, when I tell y'all I was in excruciating pain to the point of where I would get home from work and just say, let me just sit here as still as I can and hope that the pain goes away enough to where I can just go to sleep. Like, I was fighting. I couldn't go to sleep how I needed to. Like, I was in that much pain, like, for real, y'all. And my edges look a mess. I already know that. I just threw something together because they look way worse than this. <sighs> anyway, y'all, please forgive me. I know I'm late. I finally got a chance to watch the stuff because that's how bad, like, that's how bad it was, y'all. That's how bad I was hurting. I didn't even get a chance to watch the stuff until recently. Like, now, today today is sunday you know what i'm saying it is crazy and i've been trying to watch it all this time y'all so i'm sorry i had to adjust that but anyway y'all i hope that y'all have been doing well i had to give y'all a little brief update just continue to keep myself and my family in your prayers all of my family everybody's doing well they were in the eye of all the stuff that's been going on over the past couple of weeks with all these different systems that we're going through they have not been hit like that. Some of them had, you know, they lost power, but that was it. But continue to keep them in your prayers. So anyway, let's get on with this recap review. So Tasha is in the middle of talking to her lawyers and they basically wanted to know if she was the head of the criminal um, enterprise, which basically is, were you over Tommy and Ghost, their business? And so she's trying to convince everybody that that's not the case. Like what y'all talking about? Because they over here got her on under queen pen status. And she's just like, I was not the queen pen or nothing. I wasn't over nobody. So anyway, Tariq keeps coming up short on the drug money. And, you know, he's trying to help his mama with the lawyer's fees. And you got to have money to do that. Because Davis already told him off rip, you need to run me some money. Because this little chump change ain't going to hold over for long. It's just going to get you a week. So. We're at a point where he has to come up with more money and he ended up telling his um, uh, roommate that, look, I did your work for you. I'm gonna need for you to at least read over what I wrote for you so that Prof Professor Milgram won't you know, quiz you and then you look at crazy and she can obviously tell that you didn't write none of this. So he was like, I got you, I'm going to do it. And he, you know, he kept reiterating like, nah, you really need to go over this information. So anyway, y'all, Tariq gets to class and this girl is going off. I was like, ma'am, why are you going off? This girl went all the way off. She had that, you know, that slang hood talk or whatever, like somebody who you wouldn't even think would be at that school. But she was up in there and she was going off and cussing and doing the most and the teacher didn't check her, did nobody do nothing. And I'm like, oh, I guess because she's one of the three to five black people in the room, did nobody care, but okay. So anyway, everybody looking like, oh, okay. You know, the other black people are looking like, here we go. And Tariq is looking like, ooh, okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> so anyway, Davis met up with Tariq. And, you know, he wants to know what's going on with the case because Sax is targeting Tasha. So he's trying to get him, of course, to come up off more information and everybody trying to act like they don't know what's going on. But at the same time, he's like, my mama is not over nothing. She ain't had nothing to do with their business. And so it's like, everybody's trying to believe it, but it's like Tasha keeps perjuring herself. It's like, girl, you keep on lying, you're doing the most. So Davis came up with the idea to say, hey, you know, your daddy's funeral coming up, what you can do is blow all of this out of the water. You can get your mama off if you go ahead and get up there and bust your daddy business out there by giving the eulogy and basically read your daddy for Phil and drag his name through the mud. And so Tariq, you know, he's really mad at his daddy and he's basically all here for it. So he was like, shoot, you ain't got to worry about that. I'm good with that. <laughs> it is what it is. So anyway, 
Monet is laid up with this man who we later find out is this police officer. Apparently, she has an affinity for uh, <clears throat> men of a certain persuasion. Hence, her, all her children being, you know, mixed or whatever. Ain't nothing wrong with that because everybody so far, I'd have seen her dealing with his fine. So I'm like, you better do that. I'm here for it. <laughs> anyway, Y'all laid up with him and, you know, of course, this is a business relationship, whether he wants to believe it or not. And she's just like, look, I just, I'm just doing what I got to do. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm with you for right now. And like he, you can tell that he's into it more than she is. And I'm just like, sir, you don't know that this is a business transaction, but okay. Anyway, Tariq ended up meeting up with, um, old boy. Stern, I can't think of his first name right now. I don't know why, but y'all know the business partner. <sighs> I'm like, stop. Anyway, then he ended up meeting up with his mama. And Sax is trying to get people on his team to beat that case because he already knows we're going up against Davis. You're going to have to bring out the big guns because it's not going to work, sir. It's not going to work if you don't have the right people on your team. And the person that he was trying to have on his team was somebody who he basically burned bridges with because he ended up getting evidence against him like back in the day. Like he did the most to like ruin the case he had. Like he did the absolute most. So he's looking at him like, why would I want to work for you? Why would I want to be on your team? So he basically just set it up and he was like, look, man, you can run it all. You can be over all of it. I just need to win this case. So, you know, he looking like, okay, I might have to go ahead and get on your team. Anyway, I don't know what happened, but my stuff just completely cut off. Um, so, yeah, Sax ended up meeting with this dude, and he was like, look, you can head up this division. You can head it up. You could be over all of it, you know what I'm saying, just to make sure that he will be on the team with him. So, you know, he looking at it like, okay, maybe I'll go on ahead and co-sign this with you. Um Tariq ended up meeting up with Professor Milbrum. She ended up meeting up with the teacher, Mr. You know, the, Mr. Mr. Jabari, with his fine behind. <sighs> Professor, I don't even know his last name, y'all. Jabari, y'all know he's fine. Y'all, they ended up talking, and she kind of trying to make it seem like, look, I don't want nothing to do with you. Like, we just need to keep it professional. And he looking like, but why would you bring me here if you just want to keep professional? I ain't understanding that he done rolled all the way up on her body. He done rolled all of the way up on her body. And I was like, what we not finna do is this. And they did that. They started having sex. They was doing the most. And the next scene reveals that Professor Milgram is a sex addict. And I'm just like, no. No, and I mean, her sponsor was there. She was talking to her sponsor. Her sponsor had to tell her, like, look, girl, you need to stay as far away from him as you can. And I mean, she told her every single detail of what happened that day and all that. She was just like, you know your triggers. You know what it is. You're going to have to stay far away from him if you're going, you know, if you expect to do what you need to do. Because this is not how you're going to go about it. That's not how it works. So I was like, girl, you're doing the most and you got a sex addiction. So anyway, <laughs> Tariq had dinner with Zeke's family. And of course, you know, he likes that cousin, Diana. So he was here for it. And um, they ended up getting a visitor. Frank is one of the uncles, one of Monet's husband's brothers, I guess. And they was trying to figure out how he got out because he out of prison or jail or wherever he was at. And they're like, how you get out? And so he was like, don't worry about all that, you know, hook me up with connections with your daddy because I know he got all these connections. You know, they ain't going to listen to me. Y'all got all these connections and not me. And so everybody trying to figure out, okay, well, if my husband said all these things, why weren't these things set up for you when you got out? Like it ain't adding up. So since he came about, Monet ain't got time for it. She does not want Tariq to be involved in any of their business. So, they ended up carting him off, told the the, the very trigger-happy uh, son to take him back to school. And Zeke had been drinking, so she was like, you're going to be here to sleep that off, and it is what it is. So, 
the cousin, the brother, whatever he is. I keep saying cousin. I don't know if he's a cousin, bro. Anyway, y'all know he was one of the, I think his name is Woody in real life. He ended up playing like Bobby Brown. He was, yeah, he was in that new edition thing. He played Bobby Brown or somebody, one of them kids in that movie. But I had been following him like way before that. I couldn't, I was so happy for him when he got the role. Y'all, I'm sorry, I can't help it. But anyway, he ended up pulling over to the side of the road with Tariq and was talking to him and he had the gun and everything thinking he was going to have to off him. He's very trigger happy. And so Tariq had to let him know like, look, man, I know what it is. I peep game. You could tell old boy was a snitch. You could tell he a rat. I'm going to need for you to open up your eyes. And he looking at him like, well, how would you know that? You don't know him. He was like, I ain't got to know him to know he a rat. Who would just get out of jail like that? Who just get out of prison like that and don't nobody know what's going on? And if your daddy had anything to do with anything, he would already know what to do. He would already be set up. And it's like, how Tariq coming in outside don't know nothing about what you got going on. He don't know nothing about your family like that. Outside of what he has seen in public records when he was Googling your daddy. But he already know that your uncle is trash. How he know he a rat? And so he had to think about it. He was like, you know what? You're right. All right, nigga. Okay, I see what it is. So anyway, <laughs> they, meaning the people at the schoolhouse, they decided that they were going to have a, a vigil for ghosts. And I'm like, why though? Why? They trying to make it seem like they're being supportive of Tariq. He's a new student and all this other stuff. And it's like, y'all doing the most. Y'all don't know. His daddy was trash. Y'all don't know that his daddy was trash. Why is y'all here trying to set it off? Why? So anyway, um, <clears throat> he ended up not knowing really about all of this. And he rolled up and people were like, oh, we're so glad you can make it. And he, you know, see people kind of part. And then he sees this big old picture of his daddy. And he was just like, oh, no. And so he ended up asking Brayden or whatever his name is, you know, the white guy who was basically supposed to be like the younger version of what Tommy is supposed to be from what everybody wants to believe. And he was like, man, um, yeah, you mentioned a party earlier. Take me to that party. He was like, you, don't, you ain't got to say another word. All right. So he ended up taking him to this party. So Tasha is at, in prison, right? And she overhears this CO and this inmate going back and forth. They think they whisper, but they ain't. And so the inmate was like, you need to do what I tell you to do. Give me a morning after pill now. I need a morning after pill within these hours. And so she looking like, who are you having sex with that you need a morning pill to begin with? So she was looking at her like, don't worry about all that. Give me that morning pill. I said what I said. So y'all already know, if Tasha around the corner, she trying to figure out how she can swing a situation in her favor. So it is what it is. So Davis ended up meeting up with judges with the judge and um, the other people, the other uh, lawyer, so that they can cross-examine and, and all that stuff. You know, they just want to discuss to discuss the case. Excuse me, y'all. Trying to understand why Sax came out of nowhere and how he came out of nowhere and was able to swoop in and do what he did. Like, this is just random. Like, you apparently had motive. Like, why would you even do this? This ain't making no sense for you to come out of nowhere. So anyway, the family... Meaning the grandmama, the daughter, and Tariq went to go and see Raina. They went to the grave site. This is going to actually be the same day that Ghost Funeral is going to go down. And so it only made sense that they were going to be at the same cemetery, go ahead and visit her. They put flowers on her grave. Why the grandmama going to say, Raina, baby, I'm so glad you got somebody with you now. Y'all know goodwill ghost is in hell burning, burning. Why are we talking about we know that you got somebody there with you now? Get him well. Wait, who? You must be talking about somebody else because it ain't ghost. But anyway, y'all, <laughs> um, y'all, they ended up bringing Tasha to the eulogy. And you know, I don't know if y'all have ever been to a funeral where somebody had to be brought in with the vans and all that stuff who was in jail or in prison. I have. And um, <clears throat> I ain't never seen it go like this before. But Tasha rolled up. She was looking good. She was looking real good. I was like, ma'am, I'm talking about from head to toe. I was like, somebody, please. Why was she snatched like this? Why? 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 Ooh, Lord, she was looking good. Girl, you was looking good. And see, stuff like this, moments like this, even though this is a TV show, moments like this allows me to laugh on her behalf in real life when former 
singing mates have the audacity to come out of their lisping lips to try to come for her. And I ain't trying to read people with lisp, but I'm just saying, like, that is that is the only thing that people really, you know, know her for. We're supposed to promise this, promise this. And it's like, girl, why you keep coming out of nowhere trying to come for her? It's like we only knew of her initially from her singing. So when she brings up her past of singing and she's relaunching her career, her singing career, why you always got a problem with it? She always got something slick to say. Y'all, I can't stay. What's her name? Miley or I can't even think her name no more. But she was a hoe. I already told y'all before that they came to our school one year. My class. We ended up getting the school off of alert status. They were about to go into the second alert, and that means that the state was going to take over. And our testing ended up getting the school off the alert status, right? So they ended up having Ludacris come. They wouldn't let Ludacris perform because his lyrics were all the way out there. But they let 3LW perform, and she was being the biggest hoe on the stage, even though we all were kids. And I was just like, oh, y'all won't let Ludacris perform. But y'all let this heifer be a hoe all day and all day long, all up and through the stage. But okay then. She really was out here being a hoe for real. I was like, but y'all had a problem with Ludacris though. I, I'm just saying the double standard is real. But anyway, y'all, I, I just can't. I can't. If y'all were there, if you went to Sydney Lanier High School, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is when they came to the school. Y'all know what it is. Tell the truth. If you were there, y'all know what it was. Because she was really out here being a thought. And I said what I said. So anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, Tasha was looking good. She was looking real good. They ended up, um, you know, going around, showing everybody. Y'all, Tate was there. I was like, bro, why are you here? here? Um, but Ghost's uncle was there. And y'all know. It's the guy, uh, what is his real name? He used to date Aretha Franklin back in the day. Um, he played Colonel Taylor on It's a Different World. I don't know why I can't think of his real name right now. I normally know it off the top of my head. I think it's because I'm kind of Russian. But yeah, he was, you know, he's his uncle or whatever. And so he basically had all these kind words about Ghost and how he got out of the streets. And they already, you know, there's a lot of stuff. He was like, he was always taught that if you don't get out of the street life, you're going to end up dead or in jail. We've all, I think that all of us have been told that if you don't do what you're supposed to do in life, and if you're in that street life, you're going to end up dead or in jail. So he was giving that same, you know, word of encouragement, advice, or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, but the uncle was like, you know, it, you know, it was just his time to die. We all going to have to face that day. So it got to a point where I, as soon as I saw him say all that, I was like, Tariq ain't going to say what he need to say. He gonna sit up here and say all kinds of stuff outside of my daddy was was ghost and he was trash and he was all this other stuff. So that's what ended up happening. Y'all, I'm tired. Why did Tate have the audacity, unmitigated gall to sit up here and be a whole pallbearer at this man's funeral? Why? It took I was like, somebody please let the side that he carry and just all of a sudden fall on his foot. Because why are you here? You could not stand him. And I understand, but at the same time, why are you being a pallbearer? You know you trash. Now, I mean, maybe there was some kind of obligation that they kind of made it his business to do that. But I'm just like, bruh, please stop. Why are you here? But anyway, y'all, let me stop. Funeral happened. He ended up doing the eulogy because Tasha got overly emotional. I figured she wasn't going to be able to do it because she was probably going to think of the good times. And everything was going to hit her and be like, you know, despite the fact that everything he put me through, this was my husband. This is the father of my children. So she was crying. Gaz over there crying. The grandmama crying. She just crying because she missed the money. Let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. But anyway, <laughs> Davis ended up meeting up with the judges. And, you know, that other lawyer who was trying to go against Tasha in the beginning. And they ended up, you know, having this cross-examination with her. And basically, she was like, look. It is what it is. What happened was I didn't know that Sax was coming at me the way he did at, with, in, with ammunition. And it was just his way of getting in. And he basically double-crossed everybody. I had no idea that all of this information was going to go back and benefit him somehow. I had no idea. He side, he, 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 he blindsided all of us. And so everybody tied in their spirit. And it's just like at the same point in time, 
He was like, look, no, nah, I don't want to cross-examine her, but I have somebody who's going to do a rebuttal. And they ended up bringing in Blanca. Blanca was tired of her spirit. She didn't want to be there, but, you know, she's an officer of the court. And she was like, look, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I, I ain't finna lie. I ain't finna do nothing else. But it's like everything she said benefited him, but it was the truth. But it's like she kept trying to say there's more to the story, so don't try to sit up here and make it seem like she was all these things. Even after everything was over with, she rolled up on Davis and was like, look, Tasha might be a lot of things, but she didn't kill that man. She didn't do all these things that Sachs wanted to be. And But, you know, it is what it is. Like, everybody, everybody can't nobody stand Sachs. It's like, bro, you're doing the most. So anyway, y'all, um... The family is tired, and they realize that Frank is a snitch, and the trigger happy cousin and some more, and uh, like the other one of the other sons chopped that man's body up, shot him up first, then chopped his body up and got rid of it. I'm just saying, it is what it is. He had to go. He was a snitch. Tariq ended up asking the cousin that he like if his family could, you know, get something done for him, which was to get a morning pill in there for his mama. They did one better. They ended up getting a morning pill in there to her and a burner phone. And so she ended up calling him and he looking like, Mom? He didn't even know that she was calling him. But anyway, y'all, the most was going on. And, you know, she was just like, thank you, Tariq. I don't know how you did this. And he trying to figure out how she get a phone because all he asked for was a morning pill. And I'm like, bro, you should have realized more was going to be added to the plate when that, all of that was added. So it is what it is. So anyway, Monet, like I told y'all before, sleeping with the cop, she's like, look, I want information on this kid, Tariq. And that was the end of the episode, y'all. But anyway, I will be back after I get off work because I got to get to going now. I'm about to be late. Anyway, y'all have a good one and I will see y'all later on. Bye.